are you doing, Elroy? Working on a little homework? Right, Pop. We're learning all about geometry at the star school. Geometry, huh? Say, I was always a whiz at geometry. Maybe I can help. Uh, well, well, sure, Pop. So far, we've just been learning all the terminology used in geometry. Oh, you mean like angles and parallel and stuff like that? Right. I told you I really know my geometry, Elroy. Great, Pop. You can help. Uh, explain to me a ray, a line segment, obtuse, acute, perpendicular, equilateral, and uh, quadrilateral. Uh, uh, just a second, Elroy. Uh, maybe I'm a little rusty. Why don't we get the LK-14 teacher compute to help? Hey, that's a good idea, Pop. Okay, Elroy. Let's see. We'll just program the teacher compute for geometric terminology. In geometry, we use many terms, some of which are very familiar, others not so familiar. Let us explore some of these terms. Great! What are we waiting for? I will set the pace, if you do not mind, buddy. Smart aleck machines. Remember, we are discussing plane geometry, which deals with objects that lie in a plane. A plane is a flat surface which stretches out endlessly in all directions. Since this must be imagined, we usually substitute a piece of paper or blackboard to represent a plane. Okay, uh, we got that. Uh, what's the next term? Point. Point is a word with many common uses. A point of interest, a sharp point, a point of land, etc., etc. In geometry, point means a position, a particular spot on a line or in a plane. It is represented by a dot. I could have told you that. But you did not, so I will continue in my capacity as an LK-14 teacher compute. Line is a word that is also commonly used. Humans talk about fishing lines, communication lines, a line of people, and so forth. In geometry, line always means a straight line that goes on forever in both directions. Gee, it must take a pretty big piece of paper to draw a line on. Your attempt at humor is not funny. To indicate that a line continues, arrowheads are used at the ends. A ray in geometry is also straight, but it has a starting point and continues in the other direction. See, that's like a ray of sun. The sun is the point, and the ray travels out from that point. Very good comparison, Elroy. Your father should do so well. Watch it, or I'll reprogram you and turn you into a washing machine. To proceed, a line segment is a piece of a line marked with two known end points. When two lines, rays, or line segments cross each other, they are said to intersect. If two lines in the same plane do not intersect, they are called parallel. Nothing tricky about that. Not so fast, Jetson. What about these two line segments? They do not intersect. Would you call them parallel? Well, uh, uh, they, uh... Let me save you the embarrassment. They are not parallel. Segments or rays are parallel only if they lie on lines which are parallel. These segments lie on lines which would eventually intersect. <clears throat> Let's get on with this. The geometric definition of an angle is two rays with a common end point. The rays are the sides of the angle. Angles are often labeled at three points. A letter is placed on each ray and the common end point which is called the vertex. The vertex letter is always used in the middle of the angle name. This angle is angle ABC. Is there uh, any other way to label uh, angles? Yes, a small number placed inside the angle would also name it. This is angle one. Hey, what about the size of angles? Do not rush me. I am getting to that. The length of an angle's sides has nothing to do with its measurement. The measurement is made on the amount of opening or turning between the two rays. How do you do that? For illustration purposes, let us look at a clock dial numbered from 0 to 360 units called degrees. Why 360? A circle is the path a point of one ray would follow as it is rotated around another. 
it is divided into 360 degrees. 360 was chosen because it is evenly divisible by many numbers. I will fix one hand at zero and allow another to move. The farther the hand moves, the larger the angle formed. Whoopee! Please, Jetson. When the moving hand is opposite the fixed hand, they lie on the same straight line. This angle has a measurement of 180 degrees and is often called a straight angle. If the hand keeps moving, the angle can become larger. This angle measures 240 degrees. If we were to think of a hand as moving counterclockwise, however, the angle would measure 120 degrees. See, if you add 240 and 120, you get 360 degrees, which is the total degree measure of a circle. Very good, Elroy. What if we don't have your clock to measure angles with? Since you cannot always be lucky enough to have me around, a protractor is a handy tool. What's a protractor? A professional farm machine? <laughs> oh, not funny. A common type of protractor is a semicircle which has 0 to 180 degrees marked on it. Place the straight edge on one ray with the center arrow at the vertex. Read the degrees that the other ray passes through. This is the size of the angle. Say, that's pretty easy. Yes, even your father could use it. Watch it, you transistorized troublemaker. Let us move on with our investigation of angles. I shall fix two rays so they form a straight angle. That is an angle of 180 degrees. Now, I shall rotate a third ray starting at zero degrees and moving toward 180 degrees. Notice that the top angle grows larger as the ray rotates, and the bottom angle grows smaller. Anybody can see that. The ray reaches a point where the two angles are the same size, 90 degrees each. A 90 degree angle is called a right angle. When rays form a right angle, they are perpendicular. Any two lines or line segments which meet to form right angles are perpendicular. An angle of 90 degrees is called a right angle, huh? Well, are there any other special names for angles? Good question. Bad answer. You are lucky I am not programmed to be easily offended. Angles of less than 90 degrees are called acute angles. Angles larger than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees are called obtuse angles. I guess angles are pretty important, huh? Well, oh, why, my boy, they are in geometry. But outside the classroom, not really. You are making me so mad I may blow a capacitor. Geometric figures, including angles, are encountered hundreds of times in everyday life. They are very important. Gee, do you have any examples? I have got a million of them. But seriously, folks. Watch my business screen. Here is an aerial view of an old-fashioned town. People used to drive in automobiles on the ground. Gee! Notice how the streets meet in angles. Some are right angles, 90 degrees, and thus the streets are perpendicular. Other streets meet at angles of other than 90 degrees. Any more ancient history pictures okay? Yes. Before modern communications, people used something called telephones. Look at these telephone poles. They are at right angles with the ground. Therefore, they are perpendicular to the ground. Also, the poles are parallel to one another. They do not intersect. Most buildings are perpendicular to the ground. Here is an ancient building called the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It does not form a 90 degree angle with the ground. Hey, there are a lot of examples. Let's use some more terminology. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. My batteries are failing. I'll have to put the charger on before we can continue. See, Elroy, your dad's still pretty useful. I got the last word in on that bucket of bolts. Not really. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,